Hello everyone and welcome to St Mary's Ely for our Christmas carol service in 2020. As you might imagine it's slightly different this year but we hope that it will still bring comfort and joy into every home in Ely. I want to thank Bridget for being the designer, producer, architect of this service and for everybody who is involved in contributing to it. Thank you so much. And I hope that you watching at home will want to join in and sing along with our wonderful carols. Before we start, we're going to light our third Advent candle and I'll say the prayer that goes along with that. People of God return. You are called to be God's own. From the mountains announce the good news. God comes in justice and peace to all who follows his ways. You are God's children. And together we respond. Lord, make us one in the peace of Christ, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please do enjoy the service. Once in
Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I command you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and so I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. From Genesis chapter 22 verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this 
and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. For a child has been born for us. The son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice. And with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord is most will be
Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, 6 to 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. And they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The stars are brightly shining. 
Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophets. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
and everybody went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, in Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Since the day the angel came It seems that everything had changed The only certain thing Was the child that moved within On the road that would not end Winding down to Bethlehem So far away from Just a blanket on the floor of the vacant cattle store. But there the child was born. She held him in her arms, and as she laid him down to sleep, she wondered, Will it always be so bitter and so sweet? So bitter yet so sweet And did she see that In the straw by his head of corn And did she smell love In the air on the sun Not 
so far away till at last the sun runs blood red in the morning sky. Since the day the angel came, it seemed that everything had changed. The only certain thing was the child that moved within. On the road that would not end Winding down to Bethlehem So far away from home This reading is from Luke chapter 2 Verses 8 to 12 in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were lots of angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's, uh, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. This reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. 
When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. Gold, frankincense, myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, 
and that life and that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human desire, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. About 10 years ago, when I was still at university, I had the opportunity to visit China in the summer holidays. And as part of the trip, I went to visit Mount Hua with some friends, one of the five great mountains in China. And the reason that we went to visit this mountain was that some friends in the UK had visited China the year before and told me that one of the best things that they had done during their trip was to climb the mountain all the way to the top and to watch the sunrise on the cloud terrace. They told me that we had to do the same on our own trip. So thinking that this was a very good idea, the next morning my friends and I boarded a bus and about two hours later we were dropped off at the bottom of the mountain. And then we climbed non-stop all day from about 9am until 10pm when we finally reached a hostel which was very near the Sky Terrace. Now I have to be honest that by the time we reached the hostel I wasn't in the best mood. I was tired and also I was freezing cold. When we started out at the bottom of the mountain it had been a glorious sunny day but now we were above the cloud line and I wished that I had brought more layers with me. I was also grumpy that we had to pay £40 for a bed with just a raffia mat and no mattress, and then the youth hostel was charging a further £10 for a pot noodle. As I laid in bed that night, cold and hungry, I wished that we hadn't decided to climb the mountain and I began to miss my bed back at home in the UK. And then the next morning things didn't seem to get much better. Whilst it was pitch black, we were all rudely awoken and told it was time to climb to the sky terrace. I still felt grumpy, hungry and cold, but begrudgingly I did walk the last half an hour to the highest point on the mountain, and we waited, shivering, cold and helpless. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, the sun began to rise bright and strong, and we were treated to one of the most breathtaking moments of my life. As the light appeared and the darkness faded, it felt like everything changed. I forgot in that moment that I was hungry as I had far more important things to focus on, like the amazing view that I saw in front of me. I was no longer homesick, this was the most glorious place in the whole world to be. I forgot how physically exhausted I was as my mood lifted. And as the sun began to shine, it wasn't as cold, the temperature slowly began to rise as well. There was suddenly new hope for the day ahead as the dawn arrived and the night ended. Well, I'm not sure about you, but thinking about the themes of darkness and light, it hasn't felt to me like 2020 has been the brightest year in history. It's actually felt at many points like we've been walking in darkness, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm sure many of us watching this video will have experienced major disruption to our lives over the past year. We might have even lost loved ones or lost our jobs or missed out on precious moments together with family. At times it's been tough going emotionally too. I found it confusing as uh, we've battled through this period and wondering whether the darkness and the confusion will ever draw to an end. However, in amongst all this confusion, I have found some glimpses of hope and light from my friends and family, from the positive stories on the news about people who've worked tirelessly to support people throughout this year. But most importantly of all, I found hope in Jesus. And as we've heard read to us in our last reading, 
Jesus is the true light that gives light to everyone. And even in the hardest moments of this year, I felt Jesus drawing near to me, giving me the strength to keep going, reminding me that he loves me and that he has good plans for me too. So this Christmas, even though it might be a bit different to normal, please don't just write it off. If you're brave enough to invite Jesus to come into your life, to help you to know his love and to give you hope as you look to the future, this could be a much better and brighter Christmas than you ever dreamt it could be. Just like I found on top of Mount Hua, when the light arrived, the darkness faded and everything changed. And if you invite Jesus to draw near to you, he promises too that he will shine into the darkness of your life and help you to see the grace and the truth that only he can offer. So I'm going to lead us in a short prayer now to give us an opportunity to do exactly this. If you'd like to make it your own prayer, why not echo it quietly in your own heart? So let's pray. Lord Jesus, in amongst the darkness of our world and the darkness of my own life, I invite you to come and shine your light, to change me and renew me, to give me a fresh start and to help me to know your great love for me. Amen. Well, happy Christmas from all of us at St Mary's. Do come and visit us in the new year at church and say hello or make contact via our website if you'd like to find out more about what we get up to and what it means to allow Jesus to shine into your life. But for now, I'm going to leave us to enjoy one final carol. Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Thank you, Bridget, once again, and everybody who contributed. We really appreciate the work you've done. It was such a wonderful service. It'll be available on our website for the next week. Uh, if you want to introduce your friends and neighbours to it, that would be a wonderful thing to do. And like all our online services, it's actually available pretty much forever on YouTube on our channel. If you want details of our, the rest of our Christmas services, the crib service on Christmas Eve and the Christmas Day services, then you'll find those on our website. The address should be displayed on the screen now. So please do join us for those services. And immediately after this, uh, there will be, uh, we'll be opening up a Zoom call uh, called Mulled Wine with Chris. Um, you, if you haven't got tickets yet, you can still go and uh, join in, but it's just a chance for us all to get together after the service and have a bit of a chat. Um, and if you've got some mulled wine in the house or a glass of red or something, then please do uh, pour that uh, and some snacks and bring them along. And uh, we'll see you shortly on the Zoom call.